and Missouri Senator Roy Blunt kind enough to join us this morning. Senator, good to talk to you. Hey, AJ, good to talk to you. How are you today? Doing very well, sir. We've got uh, the fiscal cliff. We have Benghazi, and we have scandal in the military and intelligence ranks. There is plenty to sort through in Washington today. Would you prioritize these for us? Well, you know, I mean, Benghazi obviously is something we need to understand. Americans died, and uh, our national security is the principal responsibility of the federal government. So we have to be concerned about that. I'm on the Senate Intelligence Committee. We had a meeting yesterday. We'll have more meetings uh, this week, and I'm sure, among other things, we'll want to know uh, what was in uh, General Petraeus's personal report uh, that he put together just last week after a personal trip to uh, Libya to to look at this. Um, I think there's some concern that I share uh, with Diane Feinstein, our chairman, uh, that the, the committee hasn't been given that report, which I think normally would be passed right along to the people in the House and Senate who are selected to monitor these intelligence activities. So that's that's critical, and the fiscal cliff uh, is, is critical, too. There, there's a reason you call it a cliff. Uh, I would think we wouldn't want to go off it. And, uh, you know, this is one of those times when uh, presidential leadership is essential if you're going to get a solution, and it has to be a solution that's possible. It can't just be... Uh, with this uh, Congress, uh, whatever the president wants, but uh, the president has to lead in putting together uh, the way to, uh, to not go off the cliff and not send do things that send us into an economic downturn. Senator, you started with Benghazi, so I'm going to go there, and we'll come to the fiscal cliff here in, in just a moment. If the accusations okay. are true that no help was sent when it was available, either from the CIA or from the military. Uh, now how does this play out, and whose heads need to roll? Well, let's, I think you've got to decide what's true and what's not before you start talking about whose heads need to roll. But uh, you know, there, it is amazing to me that in an eight-hour period of time, uh, from the time this started until the time that the last two Americans were killed, that help couldn't come from anywhere in the world. Uh, I, I just think that's uh, hard to explain and hard to accept uh, as a as a reason. You know, there was this. There's been clearly this narrative that Osama bin Laden's dead, so that means we don't have any terrorist problems anymore, and that's just as clearly not true. Uh, so let's see what happens. I'm going to be looking, uh, I believe, tomorrow uh, at the, quite a bit of the the, the, the surveillance tape from the Benghazi uh, incident, and uh, along with the other members of the Senate Intelligence Committee, uh, and, and we'll see where we go from there. I do know we want to talk to General Petraeus, who was there just a, just a week ago, my view clearly thinking he was going to continue to be the director of the CIA. Mm -hmm. and I don't know what happened there either, and I'm interested to find out more about that. Uh, let's turn back to the fiscal cliff now, Senator. Where's the point of agreement? Where's the point of compromise on the fiscal cliff, especially now since some Democrats are saying, ah, let's just go off it? Well, you know, everybody that evaluates this, the people that work for the White House, the Office of Management and Budget, the people that work at that end of the uh, of, of the street and in the Capitol, there's a group called the Congressional Budget Office. Uh, both those economic uh, analyzing groups have said if you go off the fiscal cliff, there'll be a recession. Uh, that's what the president and uh, Democrats want to have happen unless this is solved their way, uh, I, I, surely that's not what they want to have happen. But that's what everybody predicts will happen, and it will. If you raise taxes, uh, as this would, and cut spending uh, across programs that you need to figure out what to eliminate, you know, we need to cut spending. Some of that needs to be looking at the entitlement programs uh, and being sure they last for another generation, and that's going to take some reduction in those programs, and then at that point, I think Republicans are willing to talk about revenue, uh, even if we're not prepared to talk about uh, increasing tax rates. There are other ways to raise revenue, and everybody in Washington knows what they are. But, Senator Blunt, could it be as simple as placing a dollar value on, quote, the wealthiest Americans? The president says it's 250000 Might it be half a million? Might it be a million dollars? And is there a dollar level at which you or... Or, or Republicans in general would be willing to say, okay, 
on that group of people and higher, they can pay more taxes. Yeah, I think we've been down this road a couple of other times where we talked about we're going to have cuts in spending and return for increases in taxes, and the increases in taxes always happen, and the cuts in spending never happen. So if we want to do reform of the non-discretionary programs, the entitlement programs, so that you have true reductions in spending, I think that's when I'm at least ready to talk about the revenue side of the equation, uh, but I'm not prepared to go down another path of we're going to increase revenue and really, at the end of the day, not decrease spending. There has to be some substantial uh, element of both of those things for me to be even willing to talk about uh, in, re- increasing revenue. Increasing revenue will clearly hurt the economy. Uh, now, the question is, is the benefit to the government in getting spending under control going to help the economy enough to offset that? If all you do is increase revenue, it, you're not going to solve this problem. You're probably going to make this problem worse. We're talking with Senator Roy Blunt of Missouri. I've got about 30 seconds and two quick questions for you, so I'm going to give them both to you. All right. Did the American people... I was like, yes, no. <laughs> Did the American people vote for the president's vision by reelecting him? And two, are you happy to see Senator Claire McCaskill back with you in Washington? I think they sent a very mixed message. Missouri voters and Kansas voters didn't send a mixed message. Uh, you know, they voted for House members that were generally Republican, and they voted for Governor Romney. But around the country, uh, you have a Republican House, comfortably so, and a reelected president, and both the House, the Congress, and the President need to realize there's no mandate here. I think the mandate is people uh, want you to work together. Uh, and for question two, you know, Senator McCaskill and I have known each other a long time. We get along well. There are big things we don't agree on, but almost every small, every issue that relates to Missouri, we, we've been able to find agreement on and work together. Uh, and I'm confident we'll be able to continue to do that. Always a pleasure, Senator Roy Blunt. Thank you for your time this morning. Good to talk to you, Jay.